You may be seated. Before we look into God's word this morning, uh, we want to make sure that everyone has a copy of it so that you can follow along. And so we have some men coming down the aisles now, and um, if you don't have one, just raise your hand and they'll make sure that you get a copy of it. And if you don't own one, uh, this one is a gift for you to keep. Throughout the Old and New Testament, we see very clearly the devastating impact of sin upon all humanity. Sin is what separates us from God. Sin is what brought death into the world for all mankind. Sin is why Jesus Christ came into this world to die on the cross. Sin is what breaks a believer's fellowship with God. And until we get to heaven, until we are glorified, we will continue to struggle with sin in our lives. Therefore, it's important for us as believers, for those of us who know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, to maintain our fellowship with God by dealing with sin in our life. As believers, we need to continually be examining our hearts before God, confessing and repenting of those sins that God brings to our mind. You know, the Lord's table, the communion time in which we are about to participate in, is a time in which we as believers acknowledge and give thanks to God for his death on the cross for our sins. It's important for us to prepare our heart for the communion by examining ourselves. And we need to make sure that there's nothing in our lives that would hinder us in our walk with God, our fellowship with him. So this morning, in order to prepare for the Lord's table, I would like us to look at a prayer of David that is recorded in the Psalms, in which he asks God to examine his heart. The passage is Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24. Now, we know from the Old Testament that David was known as a man after God's own heart. He was one who sought, who sought after God and loved him with his whole heart. We also know that David was not perfect. He was not sinless. However, when he was confronted of his sin... He immediately was broken over his sin, confessed it, and repented before the Lord. If you read Psalm 51, you could see the brokenness of his heart over sin. Now, before we examine this prayer of David, let's look at the context of Psalm 139. Psalm 139 is an intensely personal psalm that reflects Three, in which David reflects three basic characteristics of God, or what we call attributes of God. First of all, in verses 1 to 6, David reflects on the omniscience of God. He acknowledges that God is all-knowing. He has complete knowledge of everything. So in this verse, in these verses, verse 1 to 6, David reflects on what it means to him personally. He says, God, you know every detail of my life. You know everything that I do from the moment that I get up to the moment that I put my head down to sleep. You know every thought. You know every word even before I say it. There's nothing I say or do that will escape your knowledge. Then in verses 7 to 12, David reflects on the omnipresence of God. He acknowledges that God is ever-present. He is present everywhere in all of his creation. So again, David reflects how this impacts his own life. So David essentially says, no matter where I go in all of creation, I will never escape your presence. I am constantly in your presence. If I go to heaven, you're there. 
If I go down to Sheol, you're there. Even to the remotest corner of the earth, you are there. No amount of distance can separate me from you. I can never hide from you, even in the darkest place. Then in verses 13 to 18, David reflects on the omnipotence of God. He acknowledges that God is all-powerful. He has all the power to accomplish whatever he wants. There's no limit or boundaries to his power. So David again reflects on this amazing truth of this all-powerful creator and how it impacts him personally. So David basically says in these verses, Lord, you took the time to form and to shape me in my mother's womb. I stand in awe. I'm amazed at how you have uniquely designed me and made me. In fact, before I ever came into existence, you already planned my life and have predetermined the days of my life on earth. Now, having reflected upon these things, David doesn't understand why this all-knowing, this ever-present, this all-powerful God would allow wickedness, those who take the name of God in vain, to exist. David hates those who oppose God. He hates those who are enemies of him. So David says in verses 19 to 22, I have the deepest hatred for those who hate you. I'm disgusted with them, those who rebel against you. They are your enemies. And he basically said, Lord, kill them. Wipe them out. Now David then concludes his psalm with a prayer from his heart. He says, look at verse 23, 24. Search me, O God, know my heart. Try me, know my anxious thoughts. And see if there's any hurtful way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. Even though David expressed his hatred for the enemies of God, he wanted to make sure that every thought, every motive, every action of his life was pleasing to God. He asked God to examine his heart and to lead him in the path of his will. If we examine this prayer carefully, we could see four things about David's heart. First of all, this prayer reflects one who understands his sinfulness. David is asking the Lord here to test his heart, to evaluate it, to critique his life. David knew the depravity of his own heart. He knew that he had thoughts and attitudes and motives that were not always pleasing to God. He knew that he could be blinded by his own sin. He knew that he could rationalize and justify any sin. He knew the deceitfulness of his own heart. So therefore, since he couldn't trust his own heart, he needed to ask God to search it and to reveal it to him. Secondly, we see in this prayer that it reflects the heart of one who wants to deal with sin in his life. This is not the kind of prayer that a person would pray unless he seriously want to deal with sin. It reveals that David wanted to deal with sin right away. You know, so often we postpone dealing with sin in our life. The moment God reveals our sin, we need to deal with it. We need to keep short accounts with God. So asking God to search our heart is not easy. It's not easy to see the sinfulness in our own heart. And so we need to ask God that he would use his spirit, his word, and perhaps the lives of others to point out sin that we need to confess before him. Third, this prayer reflects the heart of one who understood the consequences of a sin. Notice he says, if there's any hurtful way in me. David understood that every time he sinned, he brought grief to the heart of God. You know, so often we take sin very academically. 
we don't think in terms of how our sin grieves the heart of God. And then fourth, this prayer reflects the heart of one who wants to walk in obedience to God's will. He says, lead me in the everlasting way. David not only asked God to reveal it to him, but it's for the purpose that he would walk in the will of God, walk in obedience, that he would confess it, that he would repent, and to walk in God's path. I believe that this prayer is an appropriate prayer for us as believers to pray daily, and especially as we come before the communion time. In 1 Corinthians 11, it says, For as often as we eat the bread and drink the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So we're thinking about, as we eat the bread, what the Lord has done for us, that he gave his body on the cross. When we drink the little cup of juice, it's a symbol. It reminds us of what Christ did in giving up his lifeblood for us for the forgiveness of our sins. If you're here this morning and you're a Christian, if you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then we invite you to join us in our time of remembering Christ and what he's done for us. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ, uh, then this is, this time of remembrance is not for you. But I would encourage you to take the time to think about Jesus Christ, that he came into this world to die on the cross for those who would believe in him. The only way that you can get to heaven is by placing your faith and trust in Christ and in Christ alone and in no one else and nothing else. If you have any questions about this, I would encourage you to talk to one of the pastors, the elders of the church, or perhaps a person that invited you to come. So before we participate in communion, let's take the time to examine ourselves, to ask God to search our heart, and to reveal to us anything that displeases him, and then that we confess and repent of it before we participate. And after you receive the elements, once your heart is ready, go ahead and take the elements on your own. Gentlemen, please come and serve us the communion.